once we eat C15, it then goes into all kinds of nooks and crannies, especially our cell membranes. So Darren, like you mentioned, our cell membranes made of two layers of lipids and included among those lipids is C15. But it's our cell membrane, it's literally, we are what we eat. So we can influence the fats that are in our cell membrane within five days by changing our diet. Wow. It's remarkable. <laughs> Talk to me about your background because it's so fascinating when we had our first talk. Um, your training, you're a veterinarian, yeah, right? Right. Right. And then somehow <laughs> you got connected with the Navy, a dolphin experiment, experiments, and then you wildly come, which we'll get into, wildly come up with a, uh, a discovery in the in the essential fat world, essentially, that was recently discovered. It's such a wild, so, so how, did, how did it take yeah. us through that? How did it happen? I mean, it's, uh, gosh, it was all an accident, you know, it's yeah. which is amazing. Divine oh, accident. Yeah, divine could, accident, yeah. exactly, so. I'll take those. Yeah, me too. Uh, so I'm, I'm a veterinary epidemiologist, a uh, nerd from birth, uh, mm. pattern, in, super <laughs> into pattern recognition. And so I read uh, Laurie Garrett's book, The Coming Plague, um, mm. way back when. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. I want to chase diseases down in Africa. And in order to do that, I was planning on going to medical school. And I was introduced to a veterinarian, a veterinary epidemiologist. And he said, gosh, if you want to understand diseases, really understand diseases. Don't just study what they do in one species, humans, mm. figure out what they do in a bunch of species, wow. animals. So it, I never thought I was going to become a veterinarian, but I became a veterinary epidemiologist to track diseases. So I was working for CDC and the World Health Organization. Mm. And then about 20 years ago, was unexpectedly invited by the U.S. Navy to help lead a clinical research program to continually improve the health of Navy dolphins. So, wow. You know, unexpected uh, surprise. And it was beautiful San Diego. And who wouldn't say yes to that? Uh, and so us went on there and learned uh, first that the Navy takes incredibly good care of their dolphins mm. that live in the open bay in San Diego, go out every day, every day they choose to come back. It's really an amazing program. So wait a minute. So they have, and is this generational at this point? Generational. It's been, the program's been around for over 60 years. Wow. They're on their fourth generation of dolphins. So that, that's kind of blowing my mind. <laughs> Because if I really sit and think about that, yeah. this is a a chosen, this is a choice by the dolphins yeah. that they have an interaction with the Navy, they're coming to the bay, yeah. but then they have free reign to go out, but then they always come back and they choose to come back. That's right. It's amazing. And they wow. they discovered this about dolphins way back in the 1960s um, when they had um, aquanauts. So there used to be, you know, Navy substations underwater and they needed to deliver supplies to the aquanauts, but to go up and down with the supplies frequently was really hard for humans. And they had one dolphin named Tuffy um, at the Navy and they found that Tuffy would readily deliver these things. And anyway, the Navy ended up having saying, wow, they're wa working cooperatively with us. It's This is their home. And so 60 years and, you know, by the time 60 years had passed and they've been monitoring their health so closely that they were ready to bring on an epidemiologist to say, we want to understand diseases over the whole dolphin's lives. Right. And so we were able to really understand, and the dolphins were getting older. So right. as, um, because the Navy takes such good care of their dolphins that they live a lot longer than in the wild. So in the wild, dolphins live to about 20. At the Navy, they live 50, 40 to 50 years old. 40 to yeah. 50 years. And when we were seeing this, we then were seeing that some of the dolphins, but not all of the aging ones, were developing diseases like chronic inflammation, high cholesterol, fatty liver disease, Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were looking a whole lot like healthy humans. So we were able to do uh, this advanced metabolomics study to try to figure out which small molecules, we're looking at thousands of them, which small molecules in the dolphin's blood and their all fish diet predicted the healthiest aging dolphins. And we were expecting it to be omega-3s, to be mm -hmm. honest. 
And uh, surprisingly, C15, this odd chain saturated fat, was the top predictor of the healthiest aging dolphins. So, so, so you're literally looking at because epidemiology, for those of you, it, it's it's long span, right? So it's looking at the lifetime, looking at I mean, there's a zillion factors, right? That's right. So, so the, you're looking at lifestyle, you're looking at all of these things, and of course, the the low hanging fruit is the ones in the wild die earlier. Probably just it's gnarl, it's gnarlier, and it's a tough world out there. It's a tough world, yeah, mm-hmm. and. So they have a control where they can come and rest and and come into the bay and stuff, but at the same time still go out. And so then you're looking at all of these biomarkers. And so when you say that C15, it was the it was the highest significant compound that you saw in the in the aging. Like how did you determine and how and 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 number and number two, how did you determine it and how did you determine something that you didn't know you were that even (laughs) was there (laughs) right it's a great question so we started first by looking at a fatty acid panel so the fatty acid panel includes about 30 to 40 different fatty acids and so we were we weren't biased so we didn't say just look for Mm -hmm. omega-3s but we're like let's just do the whole panel it's Mm -hmm. the same cost (laughs) to be honest is why we did it right and uh when they ran so when we did that first kind of small study we were able to show that, you know, these odd chain fatty acids, C15 and C17, were the best predictors of the healthy dolphins. And we said, hmm. So we went looking. And the way we're doing that is, is through is called a, a logistic regression analysis. So you're basically, like you're saying, Darren, you're able to control for a lot of different factors. And you're able to get down very quickly to the ones that are important. And for the dolphins, it was even easier than humans because they're so clean. Mm -hmm. They don't have, you know, if you asked anyone, any of us, like, what did we eat in the last seven days? Actually, you might know. But (laughs) most people wouldn't be able to list, like, the diversity of things that they've eaten. So dolphins just eat fish. So it's very clean. They're not on medications, right? There is just a very clean slate to be able to analyze their health data mm-hmm. and get to an answer remarkably quickly. Wow. Yeah. So and and I'm just curious because because <laughs> of the the what you brought up in terms of people not knowing what they ate and they also don't know what the hell's in the food if they're eating yeah. ultra processed food. So when you were looking at the dolphins, just out of curiosity, did you see any contaminants that were contributing to aging or the inflammation or the Alzheimer's? Did you see heavy metal accumulations? Did you see what were that? What what did that look like? We didn't see that in the Navy's dolphins. You didn't. However, wow. that has been very clear and repeated in wild dolphins, mm. uh, especially the ones that live in the waters off of some of these areas that have long been kind of dumping grounds uh, for factories um, into mm. their local waters. Unfortunately, dolphins don't move from their home. So even if like during the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, and we were heavily involved in that, mm. um, we just expected, well, the dolphins will just leave. <laughs> when the oil came in, they didn't. They stayed in the same environment and it's had generational effects for them. So we do, in the wild wow. studies, we are seeing definitely effects of uh, contaminants um, that they're getting from the fish. Not only are they living in these contaminated bays, but the fish that they're eating are contaminated as well. Wow. And that's allowing for a lot more bioaccumulation. We're seeing you know, um, impaired immune responses, uh, long-term lung diseases, mm. things like that. Unfortunately, like I said, it's tough out there. Yeah, so it depends on where their little neighborhood is and right. and what the dumping or the the contamination unfortunately happens a lot. That's uh, right. You know. Um Yeah, so so I mean, so you discover this C15. So what is it? Yeah. Like 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 tell people like that that's where it's like Right. It so, was uh, so much of a surprise. Yeah. Is it that it's uh, and it's called an odd chain saturated yeah. fatty acid. Which and- is important, right? <laughs> the odd chain side That's it. of it. Yeah. You're on it. So, you know, when we've, we've been told since 1977, you know, uh, when dietary guidelines amazingly came out from Congress. So, like, we think about it now. If Congress to- right. were telling us what we should and shouldn't eat, we'd be questioning that. But back in 1977, <laughs> right. 
it was okay. They came out with these recommendations. There were a lot of older men having heart attacks yep. and it was very real. Heart disease was extraordinarily high and they concluded that we needed to decrease uh, our intake of um, all saturated fats. And the best way to do that is to decrease a whole fat milk and butter. So um, that really has still holds today. If you look yeah. at USDA's recommendations, it says to remove all saturated fats. So what we know today, which it's great we're talking about it because not a lot of people know this, is that there are two very distinct groups of saturated dietary saturated fats. One is called odd chain saturated fats, which are like C15 and C17. And those have been continuously, continuously associated with lower risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, fatty liver disease, certain types of cancers in people. There are analyses of analyses involving tens of thousands of people over decades. That is well-established and indisputable. Mm. And then there are even chain saturated fats like C16 and C18. Those are continuously associated with increased risk of type 2 diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver disease. So the right-hand side has stuck with regard to even chain saturated fats are bad, but for some reason, we just, it's really hard for people to take the blinders off, you know, and see the science and those, these odd fats. So where, where are most of the odd fats coming from at this point? Almost entirely from, for us, um, from whole dairy fat. And oh. as we've decreased our intake of whole dairy fat, that has resulted in population-wide declines in C15. And now what we're starting to see, um, signs of nutritional C15 deficiencies. So... But you're also getting the others too, right? You are. So that's yeah. that's that's the trick. That's, that's the, the catch. Trick. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, if we look at butter, which has the highest amount of C15, and you looked at the fat in that, about 1% of that fat has C15 in it. 40% of the fats oh, wow. are these pro-inflammatory even chain saturated right. fats. And that number is probably going down. Well, we know that number is going down even lower for C15 because the amount of C15 in our dairy fat is dependent upon what our cows are eating. So if a cow is fed corn, they actually have lower C15 in their milk than a cow that eats grass. So grass, so essentially, so I, I love this because I became <laughs> plant-based simply by going, well, if, if, if meat is, is essentially, you could make a, a broad stroke argument that everything is a bioaccumulation, right? <laughs> yeah. Like meat's a bioaccumulator of, yeah. It's created from somewhere down the line of right. plants. So I was like, well, I don't want to kill anything. So <laughs> let's just spend my career finding the best plants in the world. Love so it. that's that's kind of where I came from, from a simplistic standpoint early on. So so if C15, so C15, is it literally then coming from grasses that it they're does. supposed to be eating in the wild and and other grasses and then where does it stop? Is there other places that C15 kind of comes in naturally? Right. So for the most part, the reason why cows are kind of our main source from it and mom when we're babies mm. is that... That's an important right? piece. <laughs> it is a really important Thank piece. Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> so, so that's milk our, is milk. Yeah. So that's yeah. the first, that's our first inoculation of C15. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's where... The deficiency question becomes really important because if mom is deficient in C15, her milk is deficient in C15. So then you start, baby starts being deficient from birth. So then as you, as the educator you are and the researcher you are, from an epidemiological standpoint, you're already starting in a massive deficit if you're the baby of being deficient in your first milk. Yeah, that's absolutely it. And, you know, we'll talk about as far as what C15 does but to kind of get to the most important point is C15 is an essential fatty acid, the first essential fatty acid to be discovered in over 90 years, which means our bodies need it. We're learning now that we need C15 in our bodies to help stave off type 2 diabetes, heart disease, fatty liver disease, and certain types of cancer. So the big hypothesis is, Darren, just like you're saying that we have you know, babies who are being born in C15 deficient world, then um, what happens now and now those babies are now entering into their 30s and we're seeing that right. younger people are getting age associated diseases. And so the question is, are these nutritional C15 deficiencies actually driving the rise in these diseases, especially among younger and younger people? Um, so it's I mean, the nice thing about deficiencies like vitamin C and scurvy and vitamin D and rickets is it's right. 
pretty quickly fixable. Like if, as soon as we can yeah. find it. Yeah, you know? if you know what you're looking for. So it's so it becomes another smoking gun in our you know in the issue of our society just plummeting and yeah. and uh you know it's like there was that study done by the Mayo Clinic that only two point seven percent of the people were actually deemed healthy in the United States. Yeah, it's scary, like, right? Whoa. Yeah. And we're fragile. I mean, so we've just right. as a society, we've become or globally and especially in the US, we've become increasingly fragile and when we talk about what C15 does, even from a very simplistic standpoint, it's a very stable, sturdy, mm. saturated fat that goes into our cell membranes. And it literally just makes our cells more stable and more resilient mm -hmm. against insult. So when we talk about environmental toxins and mm. our exposures to things, COVID-19, you know, when these things happened, our bodies were susceptible um, Def all the way down to the cellular level. Right. So, yeah. So let's 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 unpack that let's unpack that that odd chain side of it like you know obviously without we're we're on a podcast so we have no chart to point to but <laughs> right. do our best do your best uh but so there's the 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 saturated fat that doesn't have the odd chain that causes problems, inflammatory responses, stay away from that. And the science still is there after, you know, since the seventies, but this odd chain. So, so what are the mechanisms of action that this then has on a healthy cell? Right. It's remarkable and shocking really how much C15 is doing. And now the research started with us, but now researchers from all over the world are now working on C15, which is why it's so such an exciting time. All of the science um, is at discoverc15.com. So that's where all the peer-reviewed science that we're talking about. So if you really want to nerd out, wow. you can go there. So uh, peer-reviewed data that keeps being added to that. What was the website right. uh, again? Discoverc15.com. Okay. And all it is are just the papers. So right. you can just go and read, read right. the papers that are different liver and heart and uh, you know, metabolic and all the different topics. So um, uh, how does C15 work? So we talked about it stabilizes our cell membranes. Um, there's actually a really cool theory called um, that AJ Holbert came out with, and it's called the cell membrane pacemaker theory of aging. Mm. And what Holbert showed was that the more stable our cell membranes, that's based upon those fatty acids, the more stable the fatty acids, the longer as a mammalian species, our longevity. Mm. So humans and dolphins have more stable cell membranes than a mouse. So it actually explains literally how we live longer than a mouse. So mm. C15 plays this core role in longevity, but also to protect our near-term health. The second is we know that it repairs mitochondria. And so mitochondria, powerhouses of our cell, right, mm -hmm. third grade, um, is our energy producer. Mm. And so we know that C15 goes in directly and helps repair mitochondrial function, which staves off aging and all the diseases, mm -hmm. right, that come with it. And then third, it helps um, with cellular signaling. So mm -hmm. if we talk about there, usually like when a pharmaceutical company is developing a drug, they'll take a molecule and they'll find a receptor and say, if we target this receptor, it will decrease cholesterol. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the rule. C15, nature is so much smarter than that. So they've taken, nature has taken C15 and it actually targets numerous receptors. So wow. I'm just going to say a string of acronyms, but I'll explain what, but it, um, it activates AMPK, it mm. inhibits mTOR, it activates PPAR alpha delta, inhibits HDAC6 and, um, and JAK-STAT pathways. What that all means is each and every one of these receptors have meaningful benefits. They're in our body to basically balance our metabolism, our immunity to keep us balanced. And it makes sense that an essential fatty acid mm -hmm. would do just that. And that's why the receptors are there in the first place. So basically it, it thwarts and stops a cascade of, of damaging cellular activity. Um, so going back, going back to the, I really want to understand, I'm just curious about it and the, of the membrane itself, that membrane idea of the integrity of the membrane, like, it seems to me that when a cell is healthy, you're healthy, right? If you can, right. if if you can have healthy cells and they're hydrating and osmolotic flow and and 
and mitochondria health and everything. But I've never really thought about the membrane itself and it's in it, it, it's a lipid and structure and it has to keep out certain things, but it also has to allow the exchange of certain things. So how does it, how does it, how does C15 actually create that integrity of the cell? Yeah, absolutely. So, so C15, you know, we get our, our body can't make C15, mm. which is why it meets this criteria of being an essential fatty acid, which is very rare. So once we eat C15, it then goes into all kinds of nooks and crannies, especially our cell membranes. So Darren, like you mentioned, our cell membranes made of two layers of lipids mm -hmm. and included among those lipids is C15. But it's our cell membrane, it's literally, we are what we eat. So we can influence the fats that are in our cell membrane within five days by changing our diet. Wow. It's remarkable. <laughs> Like, wow. And so these studies so throughout the body, throughout the body, so, and most of the studies are using red blood cells. So, right. but it shows that very rapidly, our cells will react to what we eat. And the more, um, as we get older, the more polyunsaturated fatty acids, even though they have a crucial role in keeping us healthy, if we have too many of them and too little stable saturated fats like C15, the cells become imbalanced and they actually become very susceptible mm. to this thing called lipid peroxidation. So oxidation right. can attack, oxygen can attack it. Right. Our cells become fragile and we fall apart. So C15, it literally like it is working like a brick, just helping to stabilize our cell membranes and to help defend against oxygen, which ironically we need to live, but in the end is kind of what takes us down. <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Oxygen is <laughs> such a wild thing because it's like a spark. Yeah. Right. And yeah. we need it to ignite that kind of cellular metabolism. Yep. But at the same time, it's like fire. Like you, right. can, you can you can observe a fire, but all of a sudden you don't want to be in a forest fire. Right. It's yeah. going to burn you and everything around. Um, <clears throat> and I know that well, uh, having Not lost everything. But 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 that's the point. It's 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 balance. It's balance. Right. And yeah. and the and the kind of the miraculous thing that I think, and no one really knows about this still, which is kind of so wild. You're talking about an essential fatty acid that is so essential. No one has known about it for, and, and you know, it's always been there, but we thought we knew what the essential fats were. And we've been talking about them, but the one that is potentially most important, let's, we can unpack that as to why, uh, we just discovered after yeah. 90 years. Thanks like to the, dolphins. Right. <laughs> yes. And I think, you know, I get, I get a question a lot, which is, which is fair, which is like, really? Okay, you're a dolphin veterinarian. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's a lot of people working on, like really smart people working on fatty acids. And why had not this been discovered before? And, you know, there are a few main reasons. One is we talked about this, this bias against dietary saturated fats. Mm -hmm. So there is like people are saying there is no way that a saturated fat in butter is going to be not only not good for us, but essential. So those just blunders a bit. The second is that a lot of fatty acid studies, they actually used C15 as the way to measure all the other fatty acids. So it was used as because everyone just wrote it off and said, oh, there's so little of it. And that we basically will use wow. it as our, you know, like if you use a, a dime to to understand how big an object is right next to it, the C15 served as the dime to measure all the other fatty acids that was automatically excluded. Wow. Up until like ironic or wonderfully, the year that years around the years where they started including C15 as a meaningful measurement was the year that we did that fatty acid study in dolphins. Otherwise we would have never had made that discovery. So it was like in plain sight. In plain sight. But you're sight. using it for another reason That's and didn't right. understand the mechanisms yeah. of that action. Yeah. So it was wow. pretty mind blowing. So so now that we wow. Now that we know it, now it's just like as soon as those blinders come off and you start looking back at the literature, it's like, oh, because they were finding that odd chain fatty acids, people had a lower risk. But they were just kind of shrugged their shoulders and said, Yeah, it's probably not really hmm. Because they were more focused on even chains are bad. Right. And, but when you go back and look, it's like, oh, it was all right there. Um, right. We just needed a different perspective. So um, 
So obviously I'm not going to eat butter, <laughs> right? And most people don't, even if we did, we have whole butter and we're creaming it ourselves and we have clean cows and whatever. I, I mean, I still wouldn't do it. But but that said, we're not, we're, we don't even have access to it. And like you said, it's also going down because of the quality and the grains that are being fed. And so the, the access of C15 just by way of our society and processed food and over agriculture is just going down. So, so we need it. And that, and that's where I, I, when we understand, I think that's where the place of proper supplementation, uh, is important once we understand, because we are in our, we, we like look around We're we're not in a foraging no. world, <laughs> yeah. right? We are so far beyond, we think, you know, taking off your shoes and putting them on the ground or some sort of biohack. Like, no, that's literally what we did most of our days. And that was healthy for us. But, you know, so, so we have to unpack this world and kind of look at it straight on to then go, well, how can we actually now thrive in a world that biologically we haven't adapted to any of this shit yeah. right yeah so this this becomes important when you find things like this but then so number one because i always like to go there how can one who has access to clean food how can we improve do you do you think that there is enough c15 in the diet if one were to eat all of their own food and grow it and regenerative ag i mean i have to ask like what's yeah. your what's your thought on that well on on one side because it's a really important question right on on one side if you were using animal products so if that they're you know things we didn't have type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease and right these diseases that were increasingly attributing to C15 nutritional deficiencies. Um, so it did mean that there was a point in time for a long time of human history that we were able to get C15 from our food. Um, and so perhaps going back to m milk, cow's milk, but we'd have to go back, back to mm -hmm. grazing yeah. and, and there'd be, we have a lot of unwinding to do, yeah. but it means it does suggest that it's possible because right. we had it before. Right. But have we changed so much today that, like you're saying, it's hard to keep up and it would be really hard to do. I do feel like this is like a, you know, a B12, vitamin B12 situation right. where right. our main source, you know, humans are, have evolved to be, or uh, to be omnivores. And so when we don't have the meat component, we've gotten really smart about how to be healthy and be healthier by not eating meat. Yeah. But we've had to engineer our way kind of how to do that the, in the best way. Well, I think we've we've adapted to be flexible. That's right. You know, we've adapted to like when we had fire and we killed animal and the concentration of meat, no one can argue with a, a, a bioaccumulation of, of that source of energy. Um, and that happened and so we were able to kind of deal with that and cook through it and figure figure that out it doesn't necessarily mean that that was right or that was perfect and that's where it's like the argument of like just because they did it doesn't mean they were just doing the very best they could to literally survive so i think when we take our lens and we learn about things like go okay well what is best for me my family society like this is the these are the questions we need to ask and and i think everyone my plant-based friends and carnivores i think everyone will understand that because of society like you said b12 has been a, a something you need to be aware of now i found it in raw spirulina by the way oh that's great. raw living spirulina has b6 b b12 like b1 like like it exists but but then powdered you know, um, process spirulina it doesn't, right? So again, and then some marketing, some like spirulina has B12. And like, that's not true. It's not true of all 
you know right. so that's where yeah. that's where some of these things and then and then you know overclaiming and the supplement world is full of that shit yeah and that's why i love the like you know of course that it, it's it's wild to think going back to the discovery of this thing it's wild to think because we think we know <laughs> right we so we're so convinced that when we do something or find something or find an answer, this is it. This is all of it. And then we get humbled. Mm -hmm. And then yet, we're like, we found all the, the essential fatty acids, you know, and the balance of three and six and nine. And like, hey, you're healthy. So get your fish oil or get your algae oil and get your olive oil. And like, it's perfect. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing thinking you know, like all the vitamins and the essential fatty acids we know today were all discovered, you know, between like 1920 to 1945 with the technologies they had back then. Right. So it's like very hard to believe <laughs> that we're done, right? right? And so we have all these wonderfully advanced technologies that are being used on the therapeutic space. But what we were able to do is we had this amazing population we were taking care of. Right. And we were able to apply these advanced technologies to then go back and basically, you know, find a secret that nature has had in front of us all along. That's like, oh, we took it, you know, we took it away. And now we're seeing, you know, it's been a 40, 50 year experiment of what happens when we take C15 out. And but now we have a chance to fix it. So, you know, from with regard to your question of where do we go from here? Mm. Um, you know, myself and my Navy physician, you know, husband, Eric, we were both at the working at the Navy. That's where all these discoveries happened. We had an opportunity and trust from the Navy to help bring C15 to the world because we were seeing that milk isn't going to be the ultimate fix because it has a lot more of these even chain saturated fats. The milk isn't, the world is not the same as it was. Right. We have the opportunity to have a pure ingredient that in tests, like in, a, in all of these, um, you know, all the wonderful activities to, is done with a pure ingredient. So uh, we challenged ourselves and said, how can we work with the Navy then to develop an ingredient that will fix the nutritional deficiencies, but it doesn't need to come from animals. You know, it can be plant-based, it can be pure. And, you know, to boot, you know, as far as going all in sustainable, we can help save the dolphins, we can save people. But we said, supplement industries wrought with even like plastics. Right. So we created a, you know, a glass bottle with a recyclable bamboo top. So, yeah. and it's just like, we really just, it takes work, mm -hmm. but we really wanted to own, to take our, you know, where we are today to a whole new level of responsibility. So we have now a, like a bio identical C15 um, that's plant-based, which is, you know, working in very well. Yeah, that's amazing. What, so what, what is the source of it then? So it's what we get is we get C, we take C14, which is mm -hmm. rel highly abundant in yep. plants. Um, it can come from anywhere, but a common source or nutmeg um, is a common source mm. for C14. And then we add a carbon onto it. Wow. So it's, it's really simple. Um, it's a very simple molecule. Um, you know, sometimes molecules can be very complicated and you wouldn't want to mess with nature. Mm. You know, nature knows best. Uh, nature's made this molecule to be very simple um, and, uh, you know, our ability to be basically put it to work. Right. Put it to work, stabilized, uh, beneficial. So, so you started administering this to the dolphins first, I would imagine, right? And this, and so what yeah. were some of the effects that you saw? And then we'll move into humans too. Yeah. So with the dolphins, we actually, it's funny, this is, we're calling it the supplement uh, for dolphins in which no, we say no humans were harmed in the making of this dolphin <laughs> supplement. <laughs> so right. it actually went into humans first. Right, right. But what we did with the dolphins is as soon as we made that discovery, we said, let's go find fish that have higher C15 in it. Mm. And so we found that not all fish have the same C15. And so the Navy found like, this is the solution. Let's feed the dolphins fish that have higher C15. And unfortunately, there's a lot less fish that have C15 in it because the waters are warmer. Fish oh, have wow. less fat and it's becoming quite challenging to find adequate C15 in so fish. So literally from a global ocean fish population perspective, 
the essential fat is going down just by way of the environment That's changing. Right. That's right. So hence wow. then, you know, at, at the drive and the desire from the Navy to say, how can we get this back to the dolphins? Because they're not getting it from the fish that used to be present. So we developed, um, you know, this, this pure ingredient. Um, we put it at, in, into a supplement called Fatty 15 and started, you know, did all the safety studies, went above and beyond. In fact, we worked on it for like 10 years <laughs> and our scientific advisors were like, okay, enough is enough. Like, you yeah, can bring yeah. it out to let's, let's put it to work. Yeah, it's, but I'm a researcher, <laughs> but, I, but I have this yeah, question, like, I have that question. Uh, and so, you know, and we had a bias against sup the supplement industry. Right. You know, we're just like, ah, oh, do we just really want to enter that world? And they said, change, change the industry. Right. You know, so we came in uh, with that. And that's when, so the, the benefits with regard to metabolism, so there are now two clinical trials that have been done um, with the C15 supplement. And in humans, um, one has shown that it helps to increase, helps to decrease LDL cholesterol. Wow. It improves the gut microbiome wow. by increasing the growth of this bacteria called Bifidobacterium adolescentis, which no we're way. all meant to have that helps us control our glucose. It's extended longevity in two Did different Did you see species. that coming before? Oh, not at all. And this is the rest of the world working on it. And Darren, that's right. what's so exciting is it's, it's not just ours anymore. It's the world's, right? right? So- um, all of these exciting things happening. And then a separate study done on young adults with uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, uh, now present in one in three people globally, one in 10 children, came out of nowhere in the 1980s. And now we think, oh, it came, this it exists because of C15 deficiencies. Wow. So that clinical trial will be um, a publication that will be coming out soon. So stay tuned. I'm not allowed to talk about the results, but we're right. excited to be able to do that. But what was really interesting when it came, so, you know, the point of getting it back in our lives is for a long-term health, metabolic, immune, heart, and liver health. But what was really a wonderful delight and surprise is that as people started taking it, we started getting this feedback of, um, like, I'm feeling better and I'm sleeping better, or my mood is calmer, or my joints don't hurt. And we're like, what? <laughs> like, it, maybe it's a placebo effect. Right. Who knows? But then as we continued the science, we went back to the dolphins and we found that our body actually uses C15 to make a second molecule called pentadecanoyl carnitine or PDC mm. that fully activates the same receptors that cannabis activates. Oh, yeah. CB1 and CB2. And we're like, oh, pain, sleep. You know, it's just like oh, all of a sudden God. mood. And I experience, I am experiencing all of those benefits. So, and I, you know, I... Don't think I'm placeboing myself, but we're now understanding how essential C15 is, not just for so our it's hitting body. all the cannabinoid yeah. receptors. And so, so when you have enough, it's it's then has this other ability to click in all those other receptors, which obviously the CBD market and THC market and all these things are because of pain and pain management. But this is like a whole nother route. Yeah. To get there. And it's probably, you know, you think about the receptors wow. like dogs and pigs and mice have cannabinoid receptors and they don't have them to smoke marijuana. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like, right. why do we have these receptors? Even though we, we're calling them a cannabinoid receptors, it's like, why do we have these receptors to begin with? It's and probably now, a misname. It's, yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. They were found because they were searching, scientists were searching for how does cannabis work? They found, and so b when they found those receptors, they named them cannabinoid receptors. But in reality, we now know that our body makes molecules that are, that is why those receptors are there to be triggered. And this was only the second, PDC was only the second ever discovered full acting endocannabinoid. So it's, we're meant to eat C15 for all of the things we've talked about, but also, you know, to make this metabolite and, you know, it's, it's, when you start looking at nutritional deficiencies, is this contributing to increasing sleep disorders and mood disorders? Right. And gosh, can we just get a little, can we, can we get fixed? Oh. Yeah, because it doesn't, it then doesn't, you can't finish your chemistry, right? Yeah. So it doesn't, it does it, it, this, this endogenous mechanism gets stopped and then pain goes up and your body can't recover as well. And it's, it, it, you know, this is where I can't help but to just be 
kind of blown away by how number one little we know because the more we look at one thing it's like the fractal of the the entire universe like you know what i mean we look and look i was i was i did a podcast on on kind of a solo episode and i was talking about kind of these fractals right so when we understand you look at a fractal like for, for example if you if you look at traditional chinese medicine every point on the bottom of the foot represents a, a energy point to reduce repair recover promote that part on the body right, right? liver point on the bottom of the foot the gallbladder point you know all this take pain away and the and it also is in the ear same system iris so it's like Everything is a fractal of the whole. That's right. And that's where it's like, I, I, I think of the same thing. As you became advanced into looking and had the ability to look deeper, you know, 90 years ago, they couldn't because they didn't have the mechanisms to look at that fractal, right. to look at those mechanisms. But now you look and you realize there was something staring at you the entire time. <laughs> And here we are in 2024. <laughs> here we are discovering more things about this miraculous system that we have, this body that we have. And yeah. that's, that's just blows me. It, 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 it throws me into a humble philosophical space when I, when I hit these things that are. And so let's, let's, um, let's shift to the differences between like omega-3 like, what does that mechanism look like? Because it's, again, it's we still need these things. They're still part of the healthy balance of omega-3 and 6 um, and even 9. Uh, but what's the difference between, like, let's just say omega-3 and C15? Right. So when we think of, like, at the world of dietary fatty acids, and you're absolutely right, Darren, it's, it's we need all of them. Yeah. Um, they're all, it's all about a balance. And uh, if we just start with saturated versus unsaturated fatty acids, and unsaturated just means that it's a fatty acid that has a double bond in it. And so the double bond is good because it allows that fatty acid to bend. So it allows flexibility, um, which our cell walls and our cells need. Um, saturated fats have no double bonds, so they're, that's why they're so sturdy. The downside of the double bonds is that they're weak points for attack by oxygen. So a polyunsaturated fatty acid means it has multiple double bonds, so it has multiple kind of weak points for attack, which is okay when we're young, but as we get older, our, we just become more susceptible right. to that range. So flexibility, a polyunsaturated, which are omega-3s. Right, which also is why when you have an olive oil that doesn't have protection of oxygen and light and it's susceptible. And so yeah, it goes rancid. Yeah. It goes rancid. Yeah. So exactly. That's exactly it. So, and then, um, you know, with the, the healthy saturated fatty C15 on the other side, when we put the paper out in scientific reports in 2020 and we laid out the evidence that C15 is an essential fatty acid we then, our next step was to say, well, gosh, let's see how it does against omega-3. Like, let's actually compare mm. it head to head. And so there's this study called Biomap, and it's used in the pharma industry to screen molecules for therapeutic properties. But it's like 12 different human cell systems mimicking various disease states. It measures 148 different biomarkers. It does it by dose dependent. It's really mm. cool, efficient study. And so we took pure C15 and we chose EPA. So we chose uh, the omega-3 EPA because if you look at all the literature, pure EPA has the most robust evidence specific to heart disease. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so we ran the two, those two pure uh, fatty acids uh, against each other, and we showed that absolutely EPA had anti-inflammatory benefits. I mean, everything, all the things that we've learned, C15 had those same benefits plus three times more against wow. across more different types of cell types. So, and then it, if EPA, if the omega-3 got too high in concentration, it actually was toxic to the cells because of wow. that lipid peroxidation. So it's a balance, but when we've been adding, we've been really good about adding omega-3s, you know, especially if we can get as much as possible through our diet. 
And then, but at the same time, we were taking out C15 mm -hmm. and that balance has just Gets gotten off. out of whack. So we just need to get it back, you know, back in balance. Right. So basically, would you say then that virtually everybody is low on C15? I mean, how, how do you, how do you, in this modern world, how do you, how do you get it? How do you stay? I mean, yeah, I, I think it, it, ex, it helps explain why yeah. one in three people globally have, you know, fatty liver disease or metabolic syndrome. It's, it's, it almost, ha it has to be a population wide issue, but instead of like a few pirates on a ship that didn't bring oranges, you know, like we've got like right. a whole world, like that you said, that's become C15 deficient. Um, yeah. So we're going to, like you said, we're going to have to kind of get smart about it. Yeah. So it's like, it's a, con it's like a, it's like a, it's like a fire, right? It's like, yeah. it's so if you're low on C15, you don't have these protection mechanisms and then you're high in free radical oxygen species with all of the f diet and food and ultra processed this and too much omega-6 and too much saturated fat. And so it's like a, it's like a perfect storm. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And actually, you know, in 2012, as to like a testament to that storm, in 2012, Columbia uh, researchers at Columbia University discovered an entirely new way that our cells were dying. Like we've mm -hmm. always known that there are three ways that our cells die, three categories of cell death. So they identified a fourth and it's like, what? Like this is a giant discovery. And they called it ferroptosis. And uh, the method in which the way the cells die is, and you can see it under the microscope. Like if you look under a microscope, you can tell which way a cell has died. So this was an entirely new way that was absolutely definable. But the, the base of ferroptosis is that it's when fragile fatty acids in the cell membrane <laughs> become too susceptible, generate exactly what you just described, generates reactive oxygen species. It takes out the mitochondria and the cell dies. And they're like, there's a whole new way our cells are dying. And so what we're looking into is, and, and importantly, wow. we know that C15 fixes every single one of those steps that causes ferroptosis. So we're able to, so all of that supports that if our cells are deficient in C15, there have actually founded, there's a calling card for right. nutritional deficiencies. And like you said, we're all, you know, susceptible. Jesus. That's, it's crazy, that's, right? That's huge. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, it's like, I, to be honest, I didn't know about ferroptosis. We had basically discovered it in the, the, the dolphins. We just didn't have a name for it. And, and is that, do you think, environmental? Um, environmental in the sense that it's environmental because the environment is so different and is so kind of polluted in our way because it doesn't seem natural like in that way it's it, like even in the yeah. dolphin side of it like yeah. everything's going down and there's toxic exposure and there's less c15 because of the population in the ocean and then us on top of it too so it's and what we're doing so you think it's 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 almost a created new cell death it is a, it is absolutely a created new cell death and so and like you're saying it's this accumulation of all of these things like it how bad does it have to get right for us to find a new way to, <laughs> to kill ourselves but, but <laughs> I mean, God, i'm like debbie downer uh, on this podcast but you know again what's encouraging is there's at least there are things we can do to help fix it right so we can get c15 we can identify what else increases oxidative stress and like you know talking nice. about the environmental toxins and things like that. So we can chip away at this Jeez. and start, start with the core of getting ourselves being resilient make us resilient again right. and then start chipping away at you know the other insults that our bodies you know yeah, you, we we need the right scaffolding yeah, and exactly. we just realized the yeah. new scaffolding that we didn't no, we had, and we also realized from what you just said, the other ways that we're killing ourselves on a cellular way. And it, and, and it's, you know, what do we think is going to happen? Blasting us with stuff that our bodies have no idea what to do with. You know, we're recreating and creating chemical food and packaging it together. And, and, and then we're deficient in something that we didn't even know existed. Right. Yeah, I, like, I mean, knowing the role of C15 um, and knowing that we can, 
reverse it. We can make cells strong again. You know, we can repair mitochondria. We can decrease inflammation. That knowing that we can do all of these things is is good. Knowing that the world is deficient and that we're all sitting on fragile systems, we see what happens when, you know, like, you know, the example I give with regard to, to COVID-19, it's not saying this is a treatment for COVID-19. It's just saying we had fragile systems. Yeah. And when the U.S. in particular got hit, mm-hmm. we many of us were too fragile to handle the onslaught. We're right. too fragile to handle any extra, anything. <laughs> it's just kind of true. You know, it's listen, we, we can name it, but we don't have to name it. Any virus, any new bacteria, any new stress, any n- new new thing, it's a cascade that spills up. If I fill up my <laughs> cup full of stress and there's more that puts on it, spills over. Yeah. Like it's, it's not, it, it, you know, that's where it's like all of this reductionism down to it's this thing. No, it's it's a it's a it's an epidemic of a big problem. We are massively sick already. You know the 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 childhood obesity, like the writing's on the freaking wall, right. right? And so when you discover something like this, that is also, by the way, just all of the things that we talked about. Why? Number one, it's so cool that we discovered that you discovered a new molecule and a new, you know, essential fatty acid. But then as you unpack the story, you go, well, why is it not in our society? And then it speaks back to, to it's, it's like, it's also a beacon to a bigger story of the problem, right? So then you have to, from your perspective, you're like, I'm a researcher. I'm looking at this. I love this stuff and we need to do something about it. And you're like, I don't want to get in the supplement industry. But at the same time, I'm putting words in your mouth, but you're probably compelled seeing how powerful and necessary this molecule is. And I mean, just in the interactions that I've had with you guys, I think, you know, it's it's a pure place that you're you're wanting people to get some of these basic and now very needed scaffolding for ourselves and for the the camera the the systems of our body that we're just figuring out and like it's it's amazing well well thank you i mean yeah, it definitely comes from a pure place we had uh you know the the advisors we were talking about it was like okay enough already where they <laughs> literally said Steph, you and Eric have a moral obligation right. to get this out to the world. Right. It's Instead safe. Like, <laughs> you can keep yeah, exactly. studying it. It's, it's like, we know it's safe, so let's get this out. So we're just like, okay, we know you, yeah. and we're we're public servants. We've been public servants our whole life, mm. and we realized, okay, we can, you know, we had to raise VC funding, but we could go to help support this effort at, along with help from the Navy, and we're like, okay. We found, you know, investors that's about you can do good and do well. And, yeah. you know, we and that sometimes things move too slowly if we just went the grant grant route or we, right. you know, it's we, we've been able to evangelize, uh, you know, the supplement industry, <laughs> be like corporate and yeah. all of this that we can have a big effect from the inside. Yeah. And work our way out, yeah. and and it was very um, intimidating, yeah. and where we're like, do we don't want to enter those worlds? Yeah. But then we realize we can go in and own it, and, and make a difference. And that's the thing. Like, listen, I've been in this supplement world for a long time, and and most products are horrible. Right. right? They're not. Yeah. They don't know what even what the hell that they have. They don't know where it's from. They don't like, you know. Just speaking of botanicals, like they don't know what the hell's going on. Right. And then and then everyone just wants it. So then suppliers just supply it. Right. And it's yeah. it's like it's the Wild West. Um, and so I look at it too, is like you have so much data <laughs> and integrity, you stand alone in it. Like, and you're the only ones that, that like that that are you're in a position to like say something and bring something out that's so important. Yeah, you, you it's it is an obligation and you take that on with a with pride. 
Right? Well, you're part of it now. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm stoked. <laughs> like listen, it or not, Darren, you're. <laughs> listen, I'm. I'm stoked. I. W- I would love That's to great. to extrapolate more and help out more than than what we're doing because I. I love this stuff. I've. 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 I've been in the middle of so many things in my life that things come and from technologies to inventions to clean energy tech, like, like I, I say, I love this stuff and some of it works, some of it doesn't. And, uh, you got to just give it a go and you got to surround yourself with good people. And I, I, I'm just grateful, um, that you all have done this your life's work and you get to also be now on this side and tell the story and we're yeah, close to the dolphins here so pretty nice. so they're hearing it so and, and, so this is really this is like a also a very simple thing it's not much that a body needs to thrive so t- tell us a little bit about the dosing and why that dose for the kind of the blanket dose for for people absolutely so we, uh, so it starts, it all goes back down to, right, the science. When we were in the lab, we're trying to, we're understanding how C15 works. It was really fascinating because whether it was mitochondrial function or PPAR alpha activation or, um, you know, all of these different benefits, we repeatedly saw that there's a Goldilocks zone for C15. And the optimal C15 activities, including like anti-scarring, anti-inflammatory, all of these things, it kept landing at like this 20 micromolar level. And we would test lower, we test higher. Um, Even a large scale study um, that was put out by a team in Harvard a couple of years ago, and they looked at C15 and uh, longevity, and they showed the same Goldilocks zone. And they said people who have C15 levels around this um, same level lived the longest. And so live longer than people who didn't have C15 or had right, low C15, for right. example. So and we, didn't need to go go more. You either. didn't need to go higher. And that's right. another thing that's re- really important. More is, <laughs> doesn't always mean better. To right? the point of like <laughs> overdoing it with, if you now that you realize you don't have C15 or enough of it and you're overdoing it with omega 3, that could th- be throwing you off and you actually could be creating a fire of inflammation in your body. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. it's finding the right, using science to help answer the critical question that you just asked, which is what's the right dose? So we know that our goal is to get this 20 micromolar level in our body and maintain it. We can only maintain it by continuing to eat C15, unfortunately, because that's what essential fatty acids do. So we know that for every 100 milligrams, at least of the free fatty acid, um, the pure C15, for every 100 milligrams we eat, increases our levels by 10 micromolars. And nobody has zero C15. So there's a little something happening, but it's not enough to fight off the disease causing part. So knowing that everyone's sitting on at least 10 micromolars. We said a hundred milligram dose is what, which is what we t- recommend everybody start with, should get most people up and over that 20 micromolar right. level. And um, and then uh, we kind of work from there. So we recommend one to two capsules, but we like, don't take more if you don't need it. Right. Start with one. And if that has those benefits for you, you're good to go. And wonderfully, um, in just a couple of weeks, we'll have a, um, uh, Genova Diagnostics uh, is going to have a C15 test. Oh, that's awesome. At home test. Oh, my God. Yeah, which is great. Um, And which is covered by HSA and FSA as well. So, um, and then there will be one that your physician coming soon that your Mm. physician can order and that's covered, um, can be covered by insurance. So you can actually go and test your C15 levels to really then truly guide how much you as an individual need to start and then to maintain. Because we don't, there's no point in wasting. So it's, it's a very, very, it's a tiny pill. It doesn't smell. It doesn't taste. Over 99% of our um, customers report that they've made fatty 15 part of their daily routine because it's easy. It's the easiest thing in the yeah, world. Yeah, and they feel better. <laughs> so uh, yeah. they keep taking it because it's like, okay, I'm, I'm feeling better. So. And, my, and I, this is not an endorsement to give to your animals, but I do give it to my animals. So my dogs get... Uh, I but love it. Stay tuned for that stay, one. Stay tuned for that one. <laughs> yeah. But um, what are you? What are you concerned about 
right now. You can answer it in this area of C15 or not, or but but what what wakes you up as an epidemiologist, as someone who has big picture but also small picture acuity acuity uh, in how you look at things? Like what what's concerning to you? Yeah, I mean we've already covered well the yeah. younger kids younger people aging faster so that one that one's the one the big one that yeah. keeps me up and that we have a chance to to stop that right now right yeah exactly right. another bigger picture thing to get outside of the c15 space is you know we were able to bring this discovery to to get to this point right to really have something meaningful happen for you and i to be sitting and having this conversation yeah. because of luck because you know I, we happen to have money in the family where we could sell a couple properties to fund the early science. Mm. We had the ability to put our salaries in half and pitch after pitch Just, after pitch after pitch to try to get that VC fund, like to get right. to be approached with lots of failure and to be able to overcome it. Mm. What keeps me up at night is how many young and smart, they don't even have to be young, how many people have had a world changing idea or discovery mm. Mm-hmm. and haven't been able to bring it to the world. And if only they were enabled to do oh. so, would we have cures for cancer, for Alzheimer's? Like there's no way we're the only ones. Right. And we just had the good fortune of having the environment that enabled us to be in the arena right. and, you know, get bloodied and marred and right. get to the other well, side. You, right. It wasn't easy. You, no, went, you no. went all in. You put <laughs> yeah. all your cards in and you're like, and not everyone can do that. Right. I mean, it was a privilege yeah. for us to be able to do that. Yeah. And it just, that keeps me up at night. I know there are people who have discovered things that will, could save the earth right. and they aren't coming to fruition because, you know, that's cute. So, well, on yeah. that, on that note, I, I personally know people that have clean energy technology that if we distributed them throughout the United States to every home, we would have all the energy needs and to other countries and it's going, it's ha- it's starting to happen. That's but, great. but I, but it's to your point, there are so many amazing things that could be implemented in this world that, that for whatever reason, whether it's personal, someone's not in a position or there's things that are just in place that are impossible for them to overcome to, organizations and and money people don't want that like all of it exists i think yeah and you know i think also i believe in in the the hope and the spirit of people like you 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 found something and you knew on some level that you were going to go for it yeah. and you started doing it and then the actions of that yeah man i i've tried many things i lost a ton of money i lost time i lost all kinds of so it's you know life is riddled in failure and you know it's that age old thing of like okay but what else is yeah. what is meaningful enough to keep going and figure it out yeah cuz you, you have know? to try you have you to know? try and and i and it's not a plug um i'm not affiliated with x prize yeah. but i will yeah. say Groups like X Prize because yeah. I don't like to mention a problem unless there's like see some yeah. like group for solution. But groups like um, you know the X Prize where people invest, they find an idea, clean energy. Yeah. They find they look for some of the world's hardest problems that need to get solved, and they offer a prize yeah. to anyone. Anyone can apply. You right. could be from anywhere to get that prize, to be able to make, do something world changing and the money it's, there's not an IP thing. It's like people right. in, they, they give money to the X prize to say, just put it to good use. Right. And so I, I hope there are more things like that that come up that can inspire people and enable them to be able to, you know, do what they need to do to help us all. Yeah. Well, a hundred percent. And, and thank you for you. Oh, well, and your right amazing you. husband to to dedicate your life and your time and and be willing to stretch yourself and to go into other areas so that we can all benefit to something that's we didn't realize it was so essential for our health and the wealth of our life. So oh. I appreciate you. 
things, Darren, a, a life worth living. And you, you've had the same, you know, yeah. it's, it's otherwise you're not really, you're not really living life. So we only have so many years. <laughs> We're trying to make it longer, but yeah, yeah. let's make our best use of it. Yeah. Make the best use of feeling better in the process so that we can, you know, have a little more fun. Thank Love you. It. Appreciate it. It was great being here. Thanks, yeah, Darren. It's great. Awesome.